are once again with NASCAR 08. And in this episode of our season with David Rudiman's Double Zero Burger King Coyote Camry, we are going to be completing race 23 of 36, which is going to take place at Michigan International Speedway for the Performance 400. I don't know why it's not going to be called the 3M Performance 400, but that's what it's called. In the last episode, we raced at Watkins Glen and got a ninth place finish, which was really nice because when we went to that track in NASCAR 09, we finished in 13th, and not only did we finish better, we actually got a top 10. In that race also, Dale Jarrett flipped like a pancake going through the bus stop. And then, once again, for like the second time probably since this year began, I dumped somebody in the last lap of the race, which ended under caution. But that driver still finished in front of me, so there was no loss, and I cannot take any complaints. Now, last time we went to Michigan, I think we spent half of that freaking race under caution, having like four or five cautions, most of them debris, because I bumped into somebody and just created a huge wreck, I think, four or five laps in. Hopefully this doesn't happen this time, and we can just have ourselves a nice race. I would say the past few races on my channel for like the past two weeks have been mostly really good, except for the fact that I won five times in a row, and I'm guessing that my viewers aren't exactly enjoying that even though I am enjoying the great finishes and great racing. But let's go ahead and get to Michigan. Ryan Newman still has the fastest lap record here at this track with a 37.069. I sadly could not beat that last time we came to this track, so maybe this time we will. But Clint Boyer's going to be starting on the pole, which is kind of weird. That's a driver that I haven't seen on the pole at all this season. David Gillen's going to start on the outside of him in second. Jimmy Johnson third. Kurt Busch fourth. Matt Kids at fifth. Michael Waltrip, our teammate in 6th, that's nice to see, hopefully he can get to the inside quickly. Kyle Busch in 7th, I almost said Kurt Busch because I'm a moron. Brian Vickers starting in 8th, Jeff Green ninth, and Elliot Sadler is going to start in 10th. So let's find the other big names, John Wood, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart all right here. Where is Dale Jarrett? Here's Dale Jr. Jr. Dale Jarrett is going to start in 19th, that's kind of an area that he starts around very much lately. At least he's on the inside, and maybe whenever we get to him we can help him move up a couple spots, which is probably the most that I can do. And you can take a look at the rest of the starting lineup. Here's Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the background with his Budweiser Chevrolet. Let's get this race underway. From the tail field as always, and our Burger King car, just because we used the Domino's car last time we came here, trying to get into third gear. They're putting that Snickers car in my face, which is just a disappointment. Get out of here. I'm starting to notice that the Snickers car and the Coors Light car, one of those cars, they all just kind of start in the back almost every time. So we got 16 laps. I slammed the brakes so I wouldn't go crashing into this inside lane. And David Strimmy came. Okay, we're going to dive off of turn two. And I'm making up spots. One thing that I noticed is that coming up on the schedule are a bunch of tracks in which we use the Domino's car for the first time. And our second time, we're going to have to use the Burger King car. So it's basically going to be four races using this Burger King car in a row. And then we'll finally be using the Domino's car again whenever... Actually, no. Also New Hampshire. We used the Domino's car in New Hampshire, so we're going to use the Burger King car in that one, which is five races in a row. Uh, I mean, I like the Burger King car, but I'm trying to balance it out, but we're just going to be using the opposite paint scheme in the opposite race, if you know what I'm trying to say. So in the first lap, I guess we gained uh, nine positions. Getting loose down here on the inside. It's a loose, tight situation I'm trying to avoid. Casey Mears is just letting me by by going to the outside. I'm really hoping that I don't do what I did last time. I'm driving the Burger King car, so nothing bad is going to happen this time, right? Really can't commit to anything after what happened at Chicagoland. Weren't we using the Burger King car in that race? Yes, we were, because I remember the clip that Dale Reynolds shared on Facebook. And he was talking about some music clip that he put in that video on Facebook. But I think, I guess, Facebook just took it out because of copyright or some crap. But, yeah, he shared the clip of that monstrous wreck at Chicagoland on Facebook with a music clip. And it muted the audio. I don't know. But, um... I remember looking at it, and I was I remember seeing the Burger King car just recently. I am recording this, um, Tuesday. The Tuesday before this video came out, obviously, or comes out, whatever. I see, uh, Robbie Gordon is in Menard's car right there. I'm hitting a brake so motherfucking hard, and letting up the gas and all that crap, and I'm still riding up against Hard Trek Jr. almost. Uh, Dale Jarrett is trying to keep... Dale Earnhardt Jr. from passing him by staying on the outside because that's how the UPS brain works. He's got a little PTSD after um, Watkins Linda keep him from actually having some logic. Get to the inside. You're clear. You are clear. Get to the inside. You stupid ass. Go through the middle right here. 
Trying to keep it off Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Robbie Gordon. Yeah, but Robbie Gordon, that's a paint scheme he doesn't use very often, so it's kind of interesting anytime I see it. Okay, I'm going to hit the brakes. In, well, I tried hitting the brakes in front of it. Whenever we went into the corner, the car just immediately started going off the track. I am trying so hard to get Dale Jarrett to just move his ass. He's already lost position since the start of the race. He's in 22nd right now. I'm just... Wow, my controller just keeps vibrating and vibrating. Is there a way I can... Uh, is there a move button? There's no move button. Oh, wait. No, no, that's block. Oh, wait, no, that's the up. I'm so confused right now. Move over. I tell him to move over, and he says yes, but then he doesn't move over. You're quite the UPS bitch, aren't you? And we just gotta pass when he cars him down. I'm trying to figure out which one is move over and which one's block. Block is the one with the, the chevron, and then the other one with the two arrows left and right. That means to move over. So confusing. Time underneath Bobby Labonte in his Cheerios car. I like that paint scheme. I remember back in the day whenever I first started YouTube, I was like, you know, I really love that Cheerios car. I love Cheerios too, and I love the paint schemes that they have. And then I would always hit the car after saying that, and it was so stupid. I think the last time that happened was in NASCAR 06, but that was like the first time in ages that I talked about how much I like the Cheerios car, and then went crashing into it on accident. Glad to see that trend is over. My main focus of this race has just been not getting tied up on anybody and sliding up into them and bringing out a caution, which has almost happened with quite a few drivers. Okay, slow down. Got it down to good speed. We can dive our way through turn three. Michael Waltrip is in second place right now, trying to get around Jimmy Johnson to take the lead. Paul Nard, I was getting underneath you. My bad. I mean, God forbid I try making a pass on somebody. No, they're not expecting it. Okay, I need to give Michael Walker a little bit of a draft in some way. Okay, here he comes. He's going to dive underneath him going into turn one, I think. Yep, there he goes. He's going to get it off of turn two. He's got the momentum. I see him shifting all over the place trying to not hit him. My car will not hold its line like everybody else's does in the middle of turn two. That's a trend that happens in the EA Sports NASCAR game. Your car can't hold the inside line off of turn two specifically. It just doesn't. And you can see where the groove goes on the track, but it just doesn't go there. I'm trying so hard to get this car to hold the inside line, and it's just doing everything it can to go up the track. Okay. I'm trying to just keep Michael Walter with the draft so that Matt Kinson never gets underneath him. Very difficult task to accomplish, considering I'm giving Ryan Newman draft, and Ryan Newman is giving both of them draft, which is just a conundrum. And Matt Kinson is going to take the lead. Well, at least Michael Walter bled one lap. That's always good for him in the points. I'm trying to make sure that he makes the chase. Oh, uh, what is he, ninth place right now? I know that he's not on the points standings chart anywhere, like where you can actually see him whenever you first open up the thing. There goes Ryan Newman to the lead. Wow, just took off going to turn three. I am putting forth so much effort not to hit my opponents right now. It's ridiculous how hard I'm trying. Okay, so Ryan Newman's going to lead the halfway point, and at the halfway point, I'm going to have made up 41 positions. Oh my goodness. Uh, that's not... Damn it. And uh, now I lose my focus trying to enter the corner. I'm trying to tell him to follow me. Instead, I tell him to move over because I just don't know what freaking thing to hit on the analog stick. Jimmy Johnson just pulled up right in front of me and almost killed himself. Never mind. I'm not going to tell you to follow me because I don't know how to use the analog stick and do this stupid total team control crap. Whenever It's not even total. It's semi-team control. Oh, uh, that's why I wish I could just drive as him. But no, EA Sports is a bunch of freaking dumbasses and take out the greatest feature known to racing games of all time. Uh, took racing games to a whole new level and made them totally worth playing. But uh, Or at least NASCAR games, because in other games, driving is actually important. Once you get the driving shit down in a NASCAR game, then you just gotta pass people. Ryan Newman, I was underneath you. And my car can't turn, so that's my excuse for you making that contact with me. Trying to get a run on him, trying to lead laps, I cannot accomplish that feat whatsoever. I was trying to get Mike Walter to follow me and help me pass Ryan Newman together so we can both be one and two, but I just did not use the right analog stick. I wanted to tell it to go up and I pressed down because I guess I'm dyslexic in terms of coordination. Well, we're going to lead this lap and Michael Walter and practically everybody else went down pit road. So I'm going to go down pit road on lap 11. 
Here we come through turns three and four, about to pass Joni Macek without even freaking trying while he's got fresh tires. We gotta slow down to 70. I know the line is before the pit wall. That's one thing I've always remembered. You'd expect it to be at the white line or the pit wall, but instead it's like a whole freaking five yards before it. That's one thing I'm starting to remember this far into my career on YouTube. <laughs> it's getting kind of sad. I say career, but I don't know, my life? Career? Life? I don't know what the hell you guys would call it, but let's take a look at this stats and information. Got the fastest lap with a 39.67. Ryan Newman had the track record with a 37.069. I don't know how in the hell that would be possible. I had to pull some stupid caution transportation nonsense in order to beat that lap time. So, yeah, there you have it. That track record, it's not possible to beat it. At least not with probably some catch-up or crap on, um, you know, the multiplayer catch-up that they have in this game. Looks like we are not going to be in the lead off pit road. As a matter of fact, Robbie Gordon is because he pit with me. There goes Ryan Newman, who was in the lead before pit stops began. Well, we're in third gear, so we don't have to deal with wheel spin anymore. I'm trying not to lepage the field. I've actually come up with a, quite a difference between lepaging the field and rutting the field. If you rud the field, it means you were never pulling off pit road in the first place. You were just sitting on the track, making sure that people crash into you. Lepaging the field is never coming off pit road. And there, there's no excuse for running the field. The paging, maybe a little bit. Maybe you're just a glitch from a video game instead of an actual driver. But if you're if you're running the field, then then it's reality and you're just absolutely fucking insane. So, there's John Wood. The guy that I kind of used to help me win the Brickyard 400 with. He beat Kyle Busch coming off of turn four. That was a great race. Of course, no one's going to remember it because I just kept winning races back to back. And I was... What kept the videos from being very authentic was the fact that I just kept winning. It gets old, you know? People don't want to see you winning all the time, even if the races are exciting for the most part. So we're in 13th. I think we can see ourselves getting a finish in the top 10, unless a caution comes out before the end. We could have ourselves making a bunch of passes at the restart. Dale Jarrett is in 12th place right now. He's been on the move. Maybe his pit crew did some justice for once. I'll try to get into the top 10 as well, because he's in 12th. He passes two cars. He'll be in the top 10. Sadly, he ain't be able to stay in the top ten unless we close the gap on those other two cars in front of these three. Oh my god, my car just fucked up the corner so bad and let off the gas. He's on the move all on his own. I don't know if it's really me giving him the draft that's helping him right now, but he's underneath Robbie Gordon. So, with this, he is going to make the top ten. Okay, let's take turn three correctly this time. This time by, we're going to have two laps to go. I think that is some time for us to get both me and Dale Jarrett to those two cars in front of me. We're going to pull up in front of Robbie Gordon excessively rudely. Or just, maybe just a little rudely. What happened to be earlier with Jimmy Johnson, that was a little more rude if you ask me, but I can't pass you on the outside. I can't pass anybody on the outside in this freaking game. I'm trying to keep him from getting underneath Dale Jarrett and also pass him at the same time, and I can only do so much. No, 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 no. And I hit the wall. Oh. No, that's not what I wanted to do. That's not... Oh, no. I wanted to get him loose, but as soon as I touched his car, we got stuck on him. And that forced me to spin him. I just wanted to tap him, get him loose. I just fucked everything up, but we're going to get a restart. Ooh, I have never been more of a douchebag in this entire existence of my channel. I'm just trying to get Dale Jarrett to top 10, and I can't pass him by on the outside nor can I keep him from getting underneath him, so I try to give him draft off the corner. I was gonna just nudge him a little bit, make him lose some speed, but as soon as I bumped into him, just turned dead right in the outside wall, and Dale Jarrett, uh, I don't know how he was the caution in that situation. I'm just doing some Burger King yoga. That was nasty, man. Everybody could just go ahead and comment, JC, you're disgusting now. You just, word for word, JC, you are disgusting. Every single one of you just comment. I mean, like, so many subscriptions lost after that bull crap. Why'd you shift down? You're supposed to shift up whenever I touch the gas. Okay, I'm in third gear. Stop sliding. I mean, I was thinking I was gonna be able to make a position at the restart, but wheel spin was worse than it, I was expecting it to be. Dale Jarrett is in the top 10. I don't think I'm gonna be able to pass him. I wanna get a top 10, but it's taking me the whole turn one and turn two to actually just catch back up to everybody. Will you get the fuck out of the way? 
That is not how physics work. I keep on hitting this guy on purpose because he just won't stop existing. Uh, we have the potential to make up more positions than you. But you, you're just there. You're, I can't. I can't teamwork in this game. What's going to work? Not teamwork because you can't have teamwork. You can't use these team control features. You can't do anything to just have both drivers on your team. You can't get the other driver on your team to finish better. Oh, my God. I'm trying so hard to do something more for myself. Uh, well, do more than just things for myself. You know, do things for other drivers as well. I just can't accomplish that task. Dale Jarrett is going to... Where are you going? No, go to the inside. Fine. I tried getting Dale Jarrett a top 10 and me a top 10. It's impossible to do that because he won't work with me and the game isn't even letting me get the option to like swap with other drivers. I'm so pissed off at the things you can't do in this game right now. Things that I used to be able to do in NASCAR 6 holding control that made the game just so much freaking fun to play. Now that we know what happens whenever you try getting a driver loose, they die, let's accept the fact that Michael Waltrip started in 6th and finished in 1st place. Winning, I think, maybe his second race of the season. I think he's won before. I don't remember which race it was, though, if he did. He led three laps in this one. And Ken Schrader started 16th, finished in second. Ryan Newman started 17th, finished in third, led five laps, which is going to give him the most laps led. I guess this is Kyle Busch right here, who started in third, finished in fourth. No, that was Kurt Busch, because Kyle Busch started behind um, Kurt Busch. Jimmy Johnson started fourth, finished in fifth. Kyle Busch started seventh, finished in sixth. Paul Menard started 15th, finished in 7th. Joe Nemechek started 28th, finished in 8th. Here's us. We started in last place and finished in 9th. Led two laps in this one. Mark Martin started 21st and finished in 10th. And, well, there's Dale Jarrett, the guy that I tried over and over again to get into the top 10. He started 19th, finished in 11th, which is still really good for Dale Jarrett overall after how his performance has been this season. I'm just very disappointed in myself, disappointed in the people that made this game and took out the great total team control feature. And, well, definitely the physics that caused Elliot Sadler to actually spin and cause a massive wreck. Well, I just wanted to get him loose. Uh, sometimes I, I'm not helping my existence whatsoever. Like, even my mom is like, Jared Cole Lewis, what the fuck was that? After Michael Waltrip's win at Michigan International Speedway, we are 852 points in front of Kyle Busch. John Wood is now in third place, 972 back. <sighs> That's what I get for intentionally dumping a driver. Well, I didn't intend to dump him. I tend to get him loose, and then I dump him because I'm like the newest version of Dan Kirkpatrick. Tony Stewart's in fourth, 982 back. Ryan Newman is in fifth, 1,018 back. Ken Schrader sixth, 1,077 back. Michael Waltrip is now in seventh. 1,107 back, so that's really great. Matt Kenseth, 8th, 1,112 back. Jeff Green, 9th, 1,173 back. And Robbie Gordon is rounding out the top 10, 1,243 back. Clint Boyer, 11th, and Jimmy Johnson still right above the cut line. I'm really starting to think that Dylan R. Jr. is a driver that specifically will not be making the chase because we're really close to that beginning. Uh, Elliot Sadler and Mark Martin probably still have a chance. I don't know about anybody else beneath them. Dale Jarrett is now in 23rd place. I would love to see him make it into the top 20 in like 19th place, not just 20th, but maybe it'll happen after the chase begins. I have no idea. But yeah, here are the rest of the point standings. Tomorrow afternoon, we are going to Bristol Motor Speedway for the Sharpie 500, which is going to be race 24 of 36, in which I don't jump a driver into the outside wall in the most excessively dirty fashion you could possibly imagine. The only thing is, we all know that I'm going to win at Bristol because in NASCAR 08, NASCAR 09, and quite a few other NASCAR games, Bristol is so easy, it, it's just unbelievable. And in other games, it's really challenging and a lot of fun to go to. And I like it whenever that's a thing, but really not in this game, so might as well just skip right over that freaking video because there ain't going to be any point in watching that. But we're going to use the Burger King car at night. I don't think there's any night races in the season where I've actually used a Burger King car, is there? But anyways... See you next time. That's that and episode over.